Hello, Bradley Dillon here from NearFury.com, and we're in St. Pete, Florida, my hometown, my beautiful hometown on a great February night. Uh, we're actually here with a new friend of mine. I uh, met him like 10 seconds ago, and he's a pretty cool dude. Why don't you introduce yourself, what band you play in, and what instrument you play? Uh, my name's Jeff Weirs. I play in The Expendables, and I sing and play guitar. First question for you guys, uh, how has this most recent tour been? Uh, Going, going through tons of different states with uh, all really, really bad weather that's going on. It's been, uh, it's been tough. We've almost had to cancel a couple of shows, but we've made it to every uh, show date. So it's been good. It's just been a little rough going uh, on the road. And uh, just outside sucks. You have to hang out on the bus the whole time. Yeah, pretty miserable. So uh, it's it's been quite a while since I've heard uh, new music from you guys. I uh, actually wanted to ask you about that. Uh, when can we expect some new stuff from you guys? Um, we're, we just got finished recording about 20 songs before we left on this tour. Um, we're just kind of waiting for the mixing process to happen, and then we're going to decide which songs out of those 20 are going to be on an album, and then hopefully release it sometime this year. With, with that, that, that actually runs into my next question. Um, when you're in the studio and you have 20, 25 songs uh, demoed out, how do you choose, say, between 10 and 15 or so of them? What goes um, into that process? Honestly, <laughs> for uh, in previous albums, we kind of just uh, put every single one of those yeah. songs that we recorded. We, we have really long albums, uh, some of our older albums, so this kind of be the first time we recorded 20 songs and didn't put all the songs on the record, so we'll see. Probably get some outside influences from other people um, that are not so close to the project, so fresh ears on it. Uh, kind of maybe how those turn better. If you could learn any musical instrument other than the one you play, what would it be? Oh man, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of a wannabe drummer. If it wasn't for the uh, the massive amount of equipment that drums uh, are, I would probably love to be a drummer. If you could bring any three bands ever on tour with you guys, who would they be and why? Ever on tour? They, we would have to, they would have to open for us kind of thing? Uh, man, I don't think... <sighs> I don't know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Jimi Hendrix, and... Uh, Death Clock. That'd be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that came out of left field, actually. Um, are are you into? Uh, then I guess I'll ask you this: uh, What other genres of music are you into other than the reggae, ska, surf stuff that you normally play? I'm uh, pretty much into anything that sounds good. I'm not really um, discriminatory about the style of music that I listen to. As long as it sounds neat and makes me feel good inside, then I listen. So if you're stranded on a desert island and you could only listen to five albums for the rest of your life, what would be? Five albums? Yes. Um, it would probably be um, one of the, the Death Clock albums. Probably the second one, I don't remember what it's called. Um, Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced? Um, Steel Pulse, True Democracy. Bob Marley, Survival. How many is that for? Yep, one more. Uh, one more. Hmm. I don't know, like maybe a sweet OFX album. I'm not really sure which one. That works. Um, okay, yeah, next question for you guys. Um, well, <laughs> We're friends though. I'm in the band. I didn't. Uh, I didn't tell you that. Um, but yeah, next question for you. Um, have you seen the uh, Warp Tour lineup this year? And uh, if so, what do you think of it compared to previous years? I have not, so I can't really comment on that for sure. Uh, um, do you have a memorable Warp Tour year that really stood out to you? Um, as far as going to Warp Tour, because we played Warp Tour not yeah. so long ago. I, I remember. Cool. Um, that was a very memorable tour, obviously, because we were in it. Uh, it's a very uh, gnarly tour. It's a grueling drives, hot weather, awesome bands. Um, it's a circus. It's a traveling rock and roll circus, for sure. It's pretty impressive. 
Who have you been jamming out to on the bus or uh, Family Land? Anybody we should know about? Um, there's this song that I really like. Uh, what's it called? It's by Juicy J. First, it's called I think Bounce It or something like that. I don't know. For some reason, I want to twerk when I listen to it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, uh, my girlfriend who's filming, hello girlfriend, wifey person. Hi, babe. Um, uh, love is GCJ. Oh, really? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm about to throw a couple thousand pounds. Right. Um, so that said, are you gonna put out a uh, are you gonna put out a freestyle album pretty soon? <laughs> no, I can only wish I could create music like that. It's fun to listen to, but I'm not very good at doing that kind of stuff. So, in what ways have you seen the music industry change in the last decade for better and for worse? Mm -hmm. um, it's changed a lot. Um, I mean, we're the product of social media. I believe that uh, we probably would never have had a chance to be the band that we are if it wasn't for MySpace and, um, and Napster. Um, so I think when we started, all that stuff was coming out, and it's totally changed the entire scene, the entire scope of the music, the way business is run, the way you advertise, the way you get your music out there. It's all changed, and uh, I think it's good. I think it's really, um, it really makes the, the public decide what is good. It's not a record label pumping um, a band that they think is what people want to hear. It's more of the people uh, collectively deciding um, what they think is good and what is, should be popular because they either like their Facebook page or they listen to their music and buy it on iTunes and comment on it and tell everybody else about it. It's more of a, I think, uh, fan-driven music industry now, which is cool. Yeah, I was actually just thinking about that because uh, I see a lot of bands are coming from this area, you know, the Under Oaths, the Tides of Mans of the World, who, oh, I mean, Under Oath was very popular before they broke up, but, like, a lot of these bands are having to start all over because a record label doesn't want them anymore. Uh, they're not selling enough records. Right. Um, for you as a really experienced musician, what kind of effect do album sales have on you as a band? Um... They have a lot. I mean, they. I mean, you're still selling albums. Um, it's more like singles and down, like you know, individual songs a lot of times from uh, iTunes. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but <laughs> uh, I think uh, it helps. I don't know. What was the question again? I lost it. Oh. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> that goes to your next question. <laughs> yeah. The, the Is camera. this going to be edited? Yeah, no, I, I usually edit it a little bit. Um, <laughs> I got bounced in my head, dude. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I'm about to throw a couple thousand. Okay. I, well, uh, it's funny because I, I don't edit a lot of these just because I love ones that are funny yet informative. Because you'll see you'll see people just ask like, this stock list of questions, <laughs> yeah. and then there's nothing funny. So I'll go to my next question. Um, how many marijuanas have you injected today? Marijuana is about injected. Yes. Um, zero. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually posted something on, you know, you mentioned social media, and a lot of my fans are really big in social media, so that's how I get my fan base around my website. But um, I actually invited people to ask any questions they wanted about you and the rest of the band. That was not the most fascinating. Ask something about marijuana. Yes, <laughs> marijuana, marijuana injections. injections. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that even a thing? I thought dad was It's like, like a meme. It's not even uh, real. It's not even real. Yeah. I'm so Threw him. social network dumb. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, last question for you. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to tell your friends, fans, and family back home? Um, hi, miss you. We'll be home soon. Uh, we don't have that much longer on this tour, so yeah. We're doing okay. We're out of the snow. We're in sunshiny, sunshiny Florida. And it feels good. We're about to play an awesome show at St. Pete, at Janice Landing. Very excited. One of my favorite venues uh, of all time. So, hello, friends, family, all those good people. You heard it here first. Uh, if you want to go to a good show, go to Janice Landing in St. Pete because. Uh, Florida is not the worst place to roll back. It's yeah. pretty awesome. 
Uh, well, it's been nice getting to know you today. Um, how, how long do you guys have left on the store? I didn't see it. Um, about three weeks. Like three and a half. Three or four weeks. Three weeks. It's about halfway. Um, actually, I do have one last question for you. Okay. Uh, what is your set list looking like for the store? Can you give us uh, a little bit? Um, bringing out some kind of some old stuff. We're playing a couple of new tunes. Um, mm -hmm. Alright, I mean, we have to play Bolt for Two, because if we don't, it will be a riot. <laughs> uh, but it, um, yeah, we got a couple of heaters in there, we got some kind of older, obscure ones in there too. So, a, little, a big mixture of, I think, all of our albums. Uh, you heard the man. Go check out the Expendables on the rest of their tour this uh, winter. It's still winter. It's hard to believe. The winter blackout tour. Yes. Um, oh, thank you guys for watching us. Be sure to check out this interview and more on newfear.com and the Expendables on the rest of the winter blackout tour. It's really not winter here in Florida. But uh, Oh, well, thanks for watching. Later.